I'm asking is because I got a fifth little hitch in the back of the pickup truck, so I gotta figure out how big the tree's gonna be if I have to pull that hundred pound hitch out. No. No. Well, yeah, but we have a little, tr- you know, we have a truck that was a trailer with a little pad. We can do that too. We've done that before. Well, it's not a big trailer. It's a six foot, maybe. But anyway, um, we can do that too. We've done that before. No, I think. I think we can do it without pulling the hitch out, so if it's... Do you remember last year? Tree? Yeah, it's about seven feet, something like that. I think they used Scott's truck and trailer last year. Oh. Or it was Larry, I don't know. I can't remember. No, we'll, I we'll get it done. Yes. Chris, it's good because I told Christine. Okay, perfect.
have you here. By the time you're ready to go downstairs for coffee after church, I think the sanctuary will be comfortable. So we do have the heat turned on. A uh, couple of announcements. First of all, how many of you have all of November's bills paid and there's still something in your checking account? Several of you have nothing left at all. That's scary. My point is, if you have all your bills paid and you got something left, you're ahead of at least two thirds, maybe three quarters of the world. And that means you got blessings to share. And we got a tree to help you to do that. <laughs> so if you haven't already done so, there's some tags left yet on our giving tree. Please take as many as your checkbook can handle and pick things up and we need them back next Sunday. Okay, really important to get them back next Sunday. If you wanna drop it off during the week, you don't have a church key, you're probably two people that, one of two people that don't, but you give me a call and I'll let you in to drop them off. But we need them back next Sunday, yes. Pastor, the men's bathroom doesn't seem to lock very well from the outside. Okay. Because Bill locked it and checked it. I don't know if anyone was here after we left on Friday. Um, and then I came back on Saturday, and because I was doing stuff during the cleaning and stuff, and um, the outside door was open. Mm -hmm. And so I locked it from the inside. So maybe that's what we should do. And there's been a couple of times that during the week I have found it unlocked and just assume somebody forgot maybe it isn't locking well. So there you go. It, it can also be locked by accessing through my office. I know not everybody that has a church key has one to my office. So if that's an issue, please let me know. But then that's buying some time for whichever one of you or two of you guys that are kind of handy on that kind of thing. Maybe we can check the lockout, see if we need to replace it. And I pulled my out, but so when I pulled out, there's a leak in the men's bathroom. Okay. You told Al, he'll be on it. Yep. Um, also, next Saturday is time to decorate the tree. Uh, it's listed as 9 o'clock, so if you have a little extra time, come down and help with that, please. And then the song that we have on your song sheet that is for after the sermon. I hear that it's probably a new one for you, but I think if you hear the tune, it's going to sound familiar. It's a very popular Jewish tune that you hear in movies and stuff. So I'm going to ask Jean right now to play it through for you once so you get an idea what it sounds like. <laughs> Besides me, feels the urge to start in with the Jewish <laughs> dance while it's going. Feel free. I was thinking a snake might come out of a basket at that point. Oh. <laughs> Are there any other announcements? Okay, with that, I invite you to stand on this second Sunday of Advent and join me in praising our Lord with hymn number 36.
Feast and Celebration Worship Booklet. We open our service in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, our God, who is faithful and just, has promised to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I invite you to take a moment to examine your heart from this last week. Most merciful God, we confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin and so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. It is with joy that I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Oh, in peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. And we pray, 
Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Ron, I don't have a song sheet. Could you bring one up for me, please? Come on back. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray, Lord God, we light this candle to thank you for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the way. We who, like sheep, have gone astray, have found the way to you through Jesus Christ. We give you thanks and pray in Jesus' name, because he lives and reigns with you in your glory and in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1 through 10. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his, del his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist, and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. Here ends the first reading. We'll read the psalm responsibly. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. That he may rule your people righteously and the Lord with justice. That the mountains may bring prosperity to the people, and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure, from one generation to another. He shall come down and rain upon the people, like showers that water the earth. 
In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The second reading today is from Romans chapter 15, verses 4 through 13. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus that together you may with one voice glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing your name. And again it is said, rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will come, even he who arises to the rule of the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Some words of encouragement 
some signs of hope. When she got into recovery and created a new life for herself, she wanted to help others who were trapped by hopelessness. So she started writing notes of encouragement and sticking them on the windshields of cars around her city or posting them on the telephone poles in local parks. She ended one note with the words, much love, hope sent. That sums up Christmas. Because of God's love for humankind, Christmas means hope. Hope that came in the form of Jesus of Nazareth. We have hope first because in Jesus we have a new king. God's chosen people have been waiting for another king in the line of King David for centuries. Instead, they found themselves ruled by Roman dictatorship. Just about the time that it seemed hopeless, God sent a new king. But very few recognized him because he was born quietly into a peasant family. His earthly herald was a solitary hermit named John, who dressed weird and ate a weird diet <coughs> and who yelled at people. Only a few shepherds were aware that the nighttime sky had split open and the angels of heaven announced his arrival with a joyful chorus. Did you ever think about that? How incredible that scene was and God gave it to no one but a few nobodies. When this king finally rode into Jerusalem some 33 years later to stake his claim, he still did not fit the role of a king. Instead of riding astride a giant white war horse, accompanied by his army and pageantry, Jesus rode into town on a donkey with a crowd of peasants following him. As we prepare for Christmas, we walk through the season of Advent, a time when we anticipate the triumphant arrival of Jesus Christ, the almighty King of kings who will reign in love forever and ever. This is the hope the word of God gives to a broken and hopeless world. Second, we have hope because in Jesus we have new life. Today's gospel reading tells us that John was a voice crying out in the wilderness. Now David wrote Psalm 63 in the wilderness of Judah, and in it David speaks about the sweet communion that he had with God. It was in a wilderness that the law was given. And God led his people through a wilderness journey for 40 years to purify them. And now Jesus comes to us in our wilderness, in those places and times when we go off course. When we turn away to try life on our own. When life seems to have gone on without us. When life is so turned upside down that we are living in a spiritual wilderness. The wilderness is hard and lonely, but the wilderness can be good for us. Time in the wilderness challenges our sense of self-sufficiency. And it's only when we realize that we cannot save ourselves that we're ready to make room for the Messiah, the Savior. It's when life is stripped down to basic existence that we are most open to hearing Jesus calling us, to hearing his words of comfort and hope. In the book of Isaiah we read, I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, and the wilderness shall be a fruitful field, and the desert shall rejoice. Jesus creates new life in the midst of our wilderness. John tells us that Jesus baptizes with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now this fire 
is to burn all the dross off that is in us. The bad habits, the self-justification, the self-centeredness, the greed, the blindness to the needs of others, the self-importance. And yes, fire hurts, but it's necessary to get down to the bare goodness because then the Holy Spirit guides us in a life of grace. There we will find the justification in the Lord, God's righteousness, forgiveness, and encouragement to stay on this new path. Lastly, we have hope because in Jesus we have a new purpose. God in Jesus comes down from heaven to take on our lot and to give us hope by being with us and for us in this life and in the next. And we'll find our lives are transformed by the grace and glory of God through the Word made flesh, our Emmanuel. Our Emmanuel, God with us, Christ Jesus. He invites us to a more abundant life lived according to a plan and purpose laid out for us since the beginning of time. That abundant life includes helping us see our neighbor as our brother or sister in Christ. It includes letting them see Christ in us and through us. It includes living for the good of others. We see that God has a life plan for them as well. And we work with them to help them achieve that plan and to see God's hand guiding, directing, and providing for them along the way. And in the process, we will notice that we need less stuff, less material things to make us happy. <clears throat> because now we find our joy in living for our Lord. And we are happy to submit ourselves to his control. John cried, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Well, the kingdom of heaven came near through Jesus Christ. The book of Matthew records nine times that Jesus offers an example of what the kingdom of heaven looks like because he wanted us to understand and to desire a place in that kingdom. And so did John the Baptist. But we need repentance first. John's mission was to call for that repentance. John was preaching to the Jews including the Jewish leadership. Now, they were the chosen people of God, yet John says they, too, need to repent and be baptized. According to John, the people of Israel were no better than the Gentiles, and let me tell you, it hurt for them to hear that one. They were not prepared for the coming of the Messiah. They needed to repent. To repent is more than confessing our sins. To repent means to turn around, to turn away. We need to change our perspective on life and its purpose. We need to set ourselves aside and live for Christ and others. Think about it. When we are planning our future, starting to look toward when are we going to book our vacation in 2023? What are we going to do for rehabbing on the house next year? These are the plans we make. But if we're setting ourselves aside and living for Christ and others, what do you have built into your one-year plan, your five-year plan, that talks about somebody besides yourselves? You got the same answer I do. But it's only then that we will be serving the true king of all creation, the ruler of all that is, the one through whom all things were made and in whom all things hold together, the one in whom we find hope for this world 
and for the next. Thanks be to God. Amen. we hardly know how to repent. Beginning again, turning around, admitting wrong, it's not easy for us. Yet you send us this messenger whose primary word is repent. Open our ears and our eyes, our hearts as well as our minds, so that we may understand the necessity of being born anew. We see the vision of Isaiah's new world, when the earth will be full of the knowledge of your Messiah Son, the wolf and the lamb, the bear and the cow, the child and the ass will be at peace. Give us a vision, too, that we may believe with the psalmist that love and faithfulness will meet, that righteousness and peace will live together. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Holy Spirit, fill us with expectation like you did Paul, whom you filled with hope. Keep us from latching onto wishful thinking. 
Instead, turn us to true hope with the full expectation of your presence in every moment of our every day, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You are a God of justice, dear Father. Help us understand your judgments. We see you loving the poor, those who languish and the oppressed. You promise that peace will abound and that righteousness will flourish. Give us the eye of Christ to see it. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With joy and thankfulness, we come to your table of presence, Lord Jesus, knowing that we have been blessed beyond measure. You love us, accept us, visit us as children from mangers, born with nothing, but now your precious children. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we acknowledge that everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. And so, and shortly from now, we'll be bringing forth our offerings and joyfully releasing to you what you had trusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation through Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great physician, we know that you are already bearing their burdens, healing their diseases along with the multitude of others you alone know by name. But now we pray for those whom you've placed into our lives, into our care. We name before you those with special need. We bring Dan, Danielle, Yvette, Mary Jo, Stacy, London, John, Brenda, Mary Lou, Al, Donna, Jack, Bobby, Lorene, Tom, Jeanette, Vanna, Al, Mary, Rayona, Brita, June, and those we name aloud in, in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. In our Lord, today we especially remember the children and the elderly that are suffering with the respiratory issues spreading across our country. We pray for quick healing and for blessings and protection for those who are vulnerable but have not yet contracted it. We continue to lift up those working in service to us and putting their own lives at risk, the health care workers, the EMTs, police and fire departments, and even those clerks that continue to serve us, post office, grocery store, so many places, Lord, that are there each and every day to serve us, protect them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we also remember the countless blessings that you have given us, but we take time now to name just a few. Lord, thank you for such a blessed day today. We ask that today. Lord, thank you, Lord, for a one hospital that we came to be. Lord, I thank you for the faithful workers around here who keep the bathroom stocked, the kitchen scrubbed, everything vacuumed and dusted, and then come in and decorate for us at well, that you would have a beautiful place to commune with us. Dear Lord, I thank you for walking with me every day, giving me the strength. Gather all of our prayers in your wide embrace, most gracious God, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share God's peace with your neighbor. <coughs> Thank you.
reconciliation and peace. On the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took the bread from the meal, he blessed it, broke it, and he gave it to those present to eat, saying, this is my body given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup he blessed it and gave it to all those present to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering his command to love one another, his life and death, his resurrection and his ascension, we pray for his coming again, even as we cry. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all of your promises may come to us and to whole creation. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our friend.
who address you as our Abba as we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're told that this meal is a taste <coughs> of the foretaste to come, of the great feast that we will have with Christ in heaven. So let's come and partake of this taste of the feast to come.
please stand as you are able. Thank mm-hmm. you. 